Hi, in this video we are going to see about RH incompatibility. So this is a very important question as far as the exams are concerned because it, is, it has been asked multiple times in multiple forms. Like for example, it has been asked as a answer briefly question, erythroblastosis fetalis. RH incompatibility itself has been asked as a short note. And they've asked a lot of physiological basis questions like what is the basis of exchange transfusion in erythroblastosis fetalis? If an RH negative mother is carrying an RH positive fetus, the first child is usually normal. Why? And questions like that. So we'll see each one by one. So first of all, what is RH incompatibility? See, the incompatibility of RH blood groups between mother and fetus is called RH incompatibility, which means if the mother is RH negative and if the fetus is RH positive, it means they are incompatible. And that is called RH incompatibility. And this can cause what is known as a hemolytic disease of newborn. Okay. So RH incompatibility can lead to hemolytic disease of newborn. See the pathophysiology of hemolytic disease of newborn. See when an RH negative mother is pregnant with an RH positive fetus, initially during the uh, during the time of pregnancy there won't be any complication for the first child. Okay. But during the time of delivery, the fetal RBC may enter a maternal circulation if there is a fetal maternal hemorrhage. Okay. In that case, this can cause formation of IgM and later IgG antibodies inside the mother. So during the second pregnancy, these antibodies can cross the placenta and bind to the fetal RBCs. Then what will happen if antibodies bind on to the fetal ant uh, antigens? Then what will happen is there will be hemolysis of the fetal RBC. And this causes hemolytic disease of newborn. So what are the clinical features? See, we, we know that the basic problem here is hemolysis of RBC. So when there is hemolysis of RBC, what will happen? That, that, that means there is an increased destruction of RBC, which means there can be anemia. And also when there is anemia, the body will try to make it up for that by uh, stimulating the extramedullary hematopoiesis. So now what will happen? Because there is increased destruction of RBC, there can be jaundice. And this jaundice will cause what is known as icterus gravis neonatorum. Icterus here means jaundice, right? So this means that as soon as the baby is born, even before 24 hours, the baby will, may be born with jaundice. And that is called icterus gravis neonatorum. Now if the condition is severe, this bilirubin can enter the brain and this can cause what is meant by kernicterus. Okay? So there are two complications that are caused by increased destruction of RBC. That is one is ictris gravis neonatorum and the other is kernicterus. Okay? Now, because of anemia, there will be increased erythroblasts in the circulation. Okay? So there is increased destruction of RBC and so there is anemia. And the body will try to compensate that by increasing the production, which means there will be a lot increased number of erythroblasts in the circulation. In such a situation, we have what is known as erythroblastosis fetalis. This again is a manifestation of hemolytic disease of newborn, erythroblastosis fetalis. Now, because there is extra medullary hematopoiesis, there can be hepatosplenomegaly. And when there is a hepatosplenomegaly, it can lead to decreased functioning of the liver which in turn can cause hypoalbinemia and whenever there is a hypoalbinemia there can be edema for the fetus and that is called hydrops fetalis so here you can see that based on the severity of the disease the manifestation can be different if it is a mild anemia it can just be a erythroblastosis fetalis if there's an if, if this grade is a, a little more, little more, more than uh, anemia there can be ictus gravis neonatorum if it is more severe, it can cause kernicterus. If it is still more severe, it can cause hydrops fetalis and the fetus may die. So this is the pathophysiology as well as clinical features of hemolytic disease of newborn. So now we will see the treatment. If, if this happens, what, what type of treatment can we, can we offer? So one thing is we can try for exchange transfusion. Exchange trans transfusion means we are replacing the baby's RH positive blood with a RH negative blood so that the antibodies will not be able to bind on and hemolyze the RBC. And what is the prevention? See, the prevention is very simple. 
in the first pregnancy itself if we administer a single dose of rh antibodies to the mother that these antibodies will take care of the fetal rbcs that might have entered okay and uh, prevent the formation of antibodies in future so the prevention is a single dose of rh antibodies to the mother soon after the first child birth so in case a short note comes uh, as erythroblastosis fetalis or rh incompatibility we can mention first about the definition of rh incompatibility and then that it causes hemolytic disease of newborn you can write about the pathophysiology the clinical features and then about treatment as well as prevention of it and that will complete your short note so i hope the concept is clear thank you